hello and welcome to Mrs. Patnell's lesson three of maths. Um, it might be a good idea in my classroom, we often have, well we do have, a number of the week. Uh, I think maybe you might get a little fed up doing it over a whole course of a week, it's up to you, but you could do number of the day. I'm just going to show you my sheets here that we have in our classrooms that we've started using. So you could choose a number of the week or number of the day and then you can try and make it in as many different ways as possible. So feel free to pause this video and have a look at this sheet and then just recreate it on a piece of paper or card that you've got at home. So basically I'll just talk you through it. If the number of the week was let's say 10 then it asks at the top to write the number. So very simply you would write in the number 10. And then next to that, it asks for tally. Now, we have gone through tally in my classroom, but maybe not everybody might have been in to hear about it. But tally means that you do lines for the number, but they come in groups of five, and they start to look a bit like a garden gate. So if we're doing the number 10 in tally, we would do one, two, three, four, but number five comes across a bit like you're building a garden gate. And then six, seven, eight, nine, and then the fifth line comes across to make 10. So 10 would look like two garden gates worth of tally lines. So remember you do four lines and the fifth one goes across. So underneath here as well, you could do it in dots. Okay, you might want to think about how what uh, it looks like on a dice. So maybe we're thinking of five and five and what those dots look like on a dice. So I might put them like this. One in each corner and one in the middle, like you do on a dice. One in each corner and one in the middle, like you do on a dice. So I've got five here and five here. Five and five is ten. Underneath here is an adding sentence. Can you come up with an adding sentence that makes ten? Now, obviously, we've done it here in quite an easy way, a bit of a, uh, a clue here. We've done five and five here for the tally and five and five here for the dots. So you might want to do five, add five equals 10 but you could challenge yourself to try and think of another way of making 10 there are many ways and we have done our number bonds to 10 a couple of weeks ago and you might remember our, our special song so you can think of different ways to make that number 10 there are many different ways don't stop at one try a different one this is what might help to do it over the course of the week and really find lots of different ways over here we put our number of the week in this circle by itself and then the other two that are stuck to it by a line are two numbers that will add together and make 10. You could repeat your five and five by putting a five in here and a five in here, saying five and five together make 10. Or like I say, you could challenge yourself. So I'm going to think about uh, four and six. Because four and six are in the mix and they both add up to make our number of the week or number of the day, which is 10. So feel free to make one of these maths mats yourself and you can use it to do number of the day or number of the week. Okay, it doesn't have to be number 10, you can choose any number you want to. I suggest that you go from 1 to 20, but it's up to you. If you want to stretch yourselves and go higher, then by all means do. Okay, so that's how that works there. I'm going to pop that to one side over here. We're going to do a little spot of counting as we always do at the beginning of our maths lessons. So hopefully you've got your 100 square with you and hopefully you can see it on the camera here. We're going to count to 60 today. We did 50 yesterday so we're going to go 10 more and go to 60 today. Okay, 60 like a cup of tea. We're going to stick to the same plan as well. Every multiple of 5, every number that ends in a 5, we're going to go high but not loud. And for every multiple of 10, the numbers that end in a zero, we're going to go no with our voices, okay? So we're going to count together. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Halfway there. Well done, guys. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 
44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, nearly there, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, well done, lovely counting today guys. By all means, use your hundred squares after this lesson to count in fives to 100, or even stretch yourself and go to 200. We have practiced that a little bit in class. And count in tens as well. And if you want to start counting in twos, which we haven't done in class yet, but your adults can help you with this, then by all means have a go at counting in twos. Okay, so we're gonna start off our lesson today before we move into our halving. We are just going to have a look at our Numicon packet here. Okay, and I am going to pick a Numicon piece and I want you to either recognise the Numicon piece or count the holes, okay, so you can pause the video but I will certainly give you a little bit of time to count the holes and then I want you with your whiteboard and pen to write the number on here, okay. So for instance, if I show you this piece of Numicon with one, two, three, four holes, I just simply want you to take your whiteboard pen and write on your board the number four, down, across, and then a line through that one like that. Okay, all right. So that's quite simple, but it's just about knowing how to write our numbers and recognising our Numicon pieces, okay? I might get a little trickier, and I might start doing a T number. So I'll obviously have a 10, which is the one here, the one lot of 10 for our T numbers. And then I might have this piece as well. So this number would be 10 with three more, 13. Okay, so my first piece of Numicon I'm going to hold up is this piece. If you're not sure what number it is, have a quick count of the holes now. I'll pause the video. And the number is, and I'll put that here, move my breakfast plate. <laughs> I'll put that there on my plate there. Let's turn that over to not confuse halving. And I will write on my board six. It's number six. Okay, let's put our six piece away. And now I'm going to show you the Numicon piece. Let's go with this one. What is this Numicon piece worth? Have a count of the holes if you are not sure. And then write that number on the board. So that piece of Numicon is number eight. The number that looks a bit like a snowman. Okay. And let's put our number eight piece away. Then we're going to have a go at writing this number. Most of us recognise this one. I don't know why we seem to use this one quite a lot. What is this Numicon piece? Pause the video if you need to. That is the number five. So I'm going to write my five on my board here. Make sure you've got it looking around the right way and it doesn't look like a number two. Okay, so that's our five. Pop that away. My next number, I'm going to do one more single digit number. And I'm going to go with my favourite colour Numicon. This piece here. Pause the video if you want to count the holes, but it is the number seven. So I'm going to write on my board seven. Make sure it's looking around the right way. Okay, I'm just going to get a little bit trickier now, and I'm going to have my ten piece as well as my um, ones piece of Numicon. So this means one lot of ten, not one one, of course. It means one lot of ten. So every T number has a ten piece as the one here at the front. That means one lot of 10, okay? So I'm gonna have 10, and I'll do a nice easy one for you at first, and then that number with it as well, okay? So you've got 10, 11, 12, okay? So there's the number 12 there, and we've gotta write 12 on our board, okay? So there's the one, that means one lot of 10, and there's the two ones to go with it. That's 12, okay? I'm gonna move on to one more T number. So I'm going to keep my piece of 10 and I'm going to put with it this one again. Okay, so I've got my 10 and five more. So this is my one lot of 10. These are my five ones. So I've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to put my 15 on here so I can write on my board my one lot of 10 and my five ones okay that's not my best five i've ever seen there there we go let's try and do a better five that's 15 
Okay, right then, moving on now, we're going to go to our halving again. All right, so we were halving yesterday with coloured teddy bears, and we're going to continue with that today, okay? So here's my halving plate. I'm kind of resting it up here on my sunglasses so you can see it a bit better than yesterday, but it might fall down. We'll see how we go. So um, I did set you a challenge at the end of yesterday's lesson to do half, there's our fraction that means half again, sharing something by two groups equally. So I set a challenge of half of 12. So we're just going to go through that today, half of 12. So I'm going to count out my 12 teddies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, do my front row in smaller teddies. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, these teddies are all the same whether they're small, bigger, or smaller. Okay, so I'm going to halve twelve. Now, if I'm halving, I must share them equally by two groups. Equally being the important word. I can't just take a whole group of them like that and put them on one side and leave only a few on the other. I must share them equally. My twelve. So I'm going to put. One, let me just put them back down again here so you can see my 12. Okay, so I am going to put one on this side and one on this side. One on this side and one on this side. One on this side and one on this side. One on this side and one on this side. I'm sharing them equally. One on this side and one on this side of the plate. One on this side. And one on this side of the plate, making sure they don't stray across the lines. Be really clear which side of the plate or your piece of paper or your board you've put them on, okay? Now, half of 12 will be what's on one side of the plate. Let's have a little count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So half of 12 will equal, my whiteboard pen here, here it is, one half of 12 equals six okay so that's our halving again now I want to tell you a little something today about how that we can only halve even numbers now we probably haven't spoke about even numbers you've not heard of that before we certainly haven't spoke about it in class yet but even numbers are very easy to show you with numicon pieces okay so we've just we've halved yesterday let's say we halved six yesterday and we found that half of six was three when we did it on our halving plates okay now six is an even number now even numbers mean that every hole has a partner hole can you see so this one is partners with this one this one is partners with this one and this one is partners with this one okay which means that we can share exactly half on one side and half on the other of the plates if this was in colored teddy bears okay can you see how it's a perfect shape there a perfect rectangle okay because six is an even number but if I show you let's look at seven here's our seven piece of Numicon can you see how it has one by itself at the top it doesn't have a partner next to it okay the others do they're fine but that top one has no partner next to it okay so that is an odd number okay seven is an odd number which means if I tried to halve seven let's look at trying to halve seven teddy bears on my plate so here's one two three four five six and seven do excuse my chickens if I try to halve seven, let's see what happens. One on that side and one on that side. Remember, it has to be equally halved. One on that side and one on that side. One on that side and one on that side. Oh, but then I've only got one to go on this side and not one to go on this side. So they're not equal. You can see I've got one, two, three, four on this side. But on this side, only one, two, three. So there's not the same amount on both sides. There's not equal sharing there, okay? So you cannot halve an odd number. Seven, having that nobble on the top, is an odd number. So I can't halve seven, okay? Let's have a look at a couple of others with those little nobbles on the top. Okay, so with the odd and even numbers, if I was to show you, let's look at 
our nine piece of Numicon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see that these ones all have a partner, but it has that nubble on the top with no partner next to it. So is this an odd or an even number? It is an odd number. Let's try and halve nine. Let's try and halve our odd number nine. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My odd number nine. Let's try and halve it. So share it equally by two groups. One for you. So I'm starting on this side and one for you. One for you and one for you. One for you and one for you. One for this side and one for this side. Oh, I've got one more for this side, but I don't have another one for this side. So on this side, there is one, two, three, four, five teddies. But on this side, only one, two, three, four. So I was unable to share them equally. So I cannot halve the odd number nine with that nobble on the top, okay? Right, I'm just gonna lay out some of my Numicom in order to 10. And then we'll just see, you can tell me, or you can tell the camera at least, which ones are odd and even. So let's put my nine there. One more than nine is 10, absolutely. And then one less than nine would be my eight piece. One less than eight would be my seven. One less than seven would be six. One less than six is five. One less than five is four. I don't know if this Numicon can be seen on the camera at the moment. Let's lay them out like this. One less than four would be my yellow three. One less than three is two. And one less than two is one. So here are all my numbers starting from one, moving all the way up to 10. Let's have a look at them and see if they are odd or even. Now one, it is the nobble on the top. It doesn't have a partner next to it. So it is odd or even. It's odd. Two, they both have a partner. Odd or even? Even. Little nobble, let's place it like this. Little nobble here. It could be on the top or it could be on the side by itself. It doesn't matter which way round it is. But that is, with a nobble, odd. No nobble. Even. Number five, little nobble on the top, odd. Six, no nobble. Everyone has a partner. So odd or even? Even. Seven, little nobble on the top, or it could be a nobble on the side if it's that way around, doesn't matter. Or even a nobble at the bottom, okay? But it has that nobble with no partner, so odd or even? Odd. So would we be able to halve seven? No, because it's an odd one. Here's eight, everyone has a partner. Even. Nine, little nobble on the top, no partner, odd. And finally, 10 here. It's an even number, so we can halve 10, okay? If you move on into the teen numbers, you would simply place your one on top here like that, and 10 and one more is 11, and it doesn't have a partner on that top one, so 11 would be odd, okay? But then equally, if you move to 12, you could put that there on the top. Everyone has a partner, so 12 is an even number, okay? So it just it works like that into the T numbers. So that is a little discussion today about halving and also about odd and even numbers and that we can halve uh, even numbers, but we cannot halve odd numbers, okay? So tomorrow we're going to carry on with halving. Uh, we're going to look at another math symbol that we've never seen before called divide. And I'll give you a little look at what that's going to look like when we do it tomorrow. This is the divide symbol, okay, like this. I think it looks a bit like two people in a bunk bed, okay? So a dot at the top, a line across the middle, and another dot underneath. And this is gonna be called the divide symbol, okay? All right, we already know our adding symbol, which looks like this, our cross. And we already know our subtraction or take away symbol that looks like this. But tomorrow I'm going to introduce you to our divide symbol because that is something quite important 
when we are halving, okay? Because we are dividing equally by two, and this is your divide symbol. So that's what we're looking at tomorrow. So have your whiteboards and pens ready, and uh, any things that you can use to divide. Remember, it can be absolutely anything, colored pencils, anything you can find, sweets, anything that you can divide equally by two, share equally by two. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.